Today, I will show you something about chronic damage of locomotion system. I'm from Department of Orthopedic Surgery. My name is Zhu Haitong. First, a general introduction. The chronic damage may affect the tissues like bones, muscles, ligaments, fascia, and etc. The causes are often overwork by the postures and the living habits in daily life. The therapeutic principle, the most important is the prevention. And the principles are as the following. The first, reduce the risk factors, do less work and modified postures. The second, we can give physical therapy. The third, proper use of enzymes, medicines. The fourth, proper injection of steroids. And fifth, for some cases, Operation is needed. This page you can see the relative common diseases in chronic damage of soft tissues. The first, low back muscle strain. Second, ascites. Third, sinusin tenor synovitis. The fourth, ganglion. The fifth, lateral humeral epicondylitis. The sixth, adhesive capsulitis of shoulder. Their manifestations may be pain, numbness, weakness, and sometimes with local swelling and elevated local skin temperature. The treatment may restrict the movement, may give inside medicine and physical therapy. For some cases, we can perform operation. This page shows you the relative common diseases in chronic damage of bone and cartilage. The first type is fatigue fracture, also known as stress fracture. 80% of these kind of fractures occur in feet. Second, Kimbach disease. The third, chondromalacia patelli. The fourth, osteochondrosis of the tibia tubercle, also known as osgood slatter disease. The fifth, lack of persistent disease. There are manifestations as the pain, sometimes with local swelling and elevated local skin temperature. Also, the patient may feel weakness at the affected joints. The treatment, we can keep observation with restricted movement, give NSAID medicine and physical therapy, but in many cases, operation is needed. This page, I will show you peripheral nerve entrapment syndrome. The first is carpal tunnel syndrome. That's a condition in which there is excessive pressure on the median nerve, which is the nerve in the wrist that allows feeling and movement to pass of the hand. The causes of carpal tunnel syndrome, the first is external compression, second, small carpal tunnel, third, interior tissue enlargement, the fourth, occupational factor, as often means too frequent movement. On the right, you can see the phalanx test as a provocative maneuver to induce the symptom of carpal tunnel injum, syndrome. The manifestation may be numbness, tingling, weakness, or muscle damage in the hand and the fingers. The treatment, conservative methods, we can limit movements and give medicines and physical therapy, sometimes injection of steroids. For operation, we have traditional open surgery or microinvasive surgery. On the left, you can see open surgery. On the right, that's a, a microinvasive surgery. Uh, that means we give li little damage to the patient and do the operation. The second is elbow tunnel syndrome. This is a condition, a pinched ulnar nerve at the elbow. This might be caused by trauma on repetitive use of the elbow and may be caused by continuous use of the elbow in a flexed position. Causes of the elbow tunnel syndrome. The first is elbow vagus. 
second, ulnar nerve subluxation, the third, medial epicondylar fracture, the fourth, traumatic ossification. The manifestation is as the ulnar nerve injury. The treatment is operation. We can release and migrate the ulnar nerve. The third is supinator syndrome. That means profound branch of radial nerve pinched and the extensor muscles of all arm dysfunction. Often we need operation to help the patient. The fourth, piriformis muscle syndrome. That means sciatic nerve pinched and the patient may feel sciatic pain. And in early stage, we can give conservative therapy, but for later stage, we need to op perform operation. Okay, that's all. Thank you.